then you start to see technology advance enough to make possible to have a machine that could be affordable enough, reliable enough to become personal computer. So IBM first and then Apple, you know, they were the pioneer there. And then came people like, you know, Bill Gates who find a way to put uh, easy software on those machines and very much, you know, uh, for commercial use, having spreadsheet on those machines. And that really makes this machine very popular. So I think the combination of, uh, you know, cheap and reliable hardware produced by IBM plus friendly operating system produced by a company like Microsoft first and then, you know, by Apple, and then spreadsheet, or, or vice versa, whatever you want to call it, I don't care, uh, uh, make, you know, the combination of easy-to-use software and affordable machine, the emergencies of personal computing. We have such a, a tremendous role in what we are going to see afterwards. Because a few, few years later, because of the internet, because of you know, personal computers, because of the power of commodity computers, here comes you know, the World Wide Web. And interestingly enough, it just in a piece of serendipity, Tim Berners-Lee was working in my team, was working in my team, he was hired by, by CERN to develop a control system for the accelerator. And then he got interested in trying to see how he could help physicists to share scientific data in a much easier way. At that time, in the meantime, you know, electronic mail was invented, you know, uh, a remote submission job was possible, but everything was very clumsy. You know, when I was myself, you know, visiting uh, Stanford in the, in the early 80s, to exchange mail with my colleagues back at CERN, I had to log on several computers, physically, you know, actually logging in, and logging on the various computers, all the way, establish a virtual link, to my machine at CERN and really have a kind of you know, remote session with my machine to be able to send electronic mail to my colleague at CERN. And that was early 80s. So in early 80s still, you know, technology was still very, very primitive. But putting all those things together, team had this vision that it could really make you know, exchange of information easier for, every, you know, for all the scientists. So that is a typical example of an invention that was developed for scientists, for the physicists, and then a tremendous societal impact because it changed the way in which everybody works and everybody uses computers. And then, you know, going uh, further, I think, you know, the web without the invention of a search crawler that made, you know, the information discovery easy. You know, Alta Vista was one of the pioneers, was a fantastic piece of, uh, of technology, Yahoo follow, and again, Yahoo was, you know, interesting work, you know, a few students from Stanford. A few years later, you know, uh, Sergey Brin and Alan Page came up with, uh, you know, similar ideas and implemented the Google. Now Google, you know, is, uh, is the phenomenon that all, uh, all of us uh, uh, have served. And, you know, then moving further, all this together is having a, another tremendous impact, I think, the way society works, and is what is now called social computing. So in the, in, the, in, the, in the time that I have allocated, I'm going to concentrate more on those more recent events because I believe those has a tremendous impact on, uh, on the society and they will certainly are going to continue to have in the future. So, Internet and the World Wide Web. Okay, so Internet, we don't have enough time to go into the, uh, the details, but again, Internet goes all the way back to the, uh, an investment of public funding in the particular case of was DARPA, was for military use, but you know, an original idea then eventually got out from the lab and became the phenomenon that first the scientists and then everybody learned how to use. On the basis of the internet, putting together technology that more or less has been around for quite some time, you know, often we think we have this, we have this discussion, he has not invented anything. He just put together hypertest who has been with us for, I don't know, at least 20 years before uh, being put uh, uh, together by team to implement, you know, the vision of the web. So actually, the most important Mario team had was to have the vision how to put together internet, hypertest, all those concepts, and come out with the World Wide Web. It was pretty hard and crude to use. In fact, I was not particularly myself excited when team started to give the first demonstration. And it's only when the web migrated to the United States and you start to have, you know, nice browser, uh, nice user interface that then became 
really useful product and had a tremendous societal, societal impact. In fact, now I can say is the implementation of the vision of this guiding in the 40 was predicating you know, the idea of a memory extender. Now the web is an extension of a memory. I'm sure, like most of you, in, in any discussion, you know, I was trying to remember the name, you know, over the coffee break, of this Alberto that was traveling motocicleta with uh, uh, Che Guevara, and I said, is Alberto, Alberto, said, don't worry, as soon as I get on the internet, I will do Alberto, Che Guevara, motocicleta, and I immediately will give you the name. So the, the, the web is now, in reality, an extension of our memory, and not, of course, only the memory. You want to do a calculation, you go on the website, you know, you can do many, many things. So really, the web has changed the way in which society works today. So is that good? Well, it depends. You know, let me pull out a news week, very recent news week. Uh, blaming on him, you know, you, you always have to find somebody to blame everything. So Newsweek, uh, uh, two weeks ago, was blaming the tremendous crisis on Anna Grispan. He's retired, so it's easy to blame on him. And basically say he believed that the internet would make the world market safer and richer with no more secrets how that vision backfire. So again, technology need to be understood, need to be controlled, need to be regulated at a certain point in time. Because, you know, the poor guy believed that internet was a, 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 an enormous source of, you know, fast processing, new instrument, but they would think that off, off, off hand, and now you will see the results. I don't need to uh, go back and uh, tell you about, you know, the e-bubble again, tremendous hype, you know, people, people believe that the whole thing could only expand and produce wealth from nothing, big, big crisis. Uh, so, it's not obvious uh, that, you know, the internet, the worldwide uh, web have been positive all around. But definitely, I'm an optimistic. I believe that, you know, they are enabling, you know, people to get together there. In a way, they are the foundation to the social computer we are going to discuss later on. So all in all is positive, but definitely, technology, you know, is never, is, is, is what the people make of it. So there have been some, some drawbacks. So um, that's basically what I just said. Basically, you know, internet and, and web designed for scientists came out from the lab, changed everybody's life. Uh, a web-based economy was born. But, you know, we remember the e-bubble burst. But still, after the burst, Amazon, eBay, they are tangible realities. They are very successful company. I don't need to tell you about Google. Everybody knows what Google is. So, now, that a little bit about the internet, the web, and the way in which they definitely change the way we work today. I mean, we don't carry around, for instance, much paper when we travel. If we need some travel information, maybe even from your smartphone or otherwise from an internet cafe, you can always go on internet and you get less up-to-date information 